Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora and this very special Dolphin Dive inside of our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership with the LeMoyne College Dolphins. I'm here picture in picture with Adam Zakowski, the head coach of the LeMoyne men's and women's swimming and diving teams as we eye the Division I move from Division II, the NE10, to Division I, the NEC. Adam, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing wonderful. Uh, thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And and when we were at the ceremony for this, where we got to, you know, people got to meet a commissioner that ironically and how small the world is and how God works. I've known an NEC commissioner, Noreen Morris, for a few years now for a commissioner connection series that I do around the country. So a lot of Lemoyne people got to meet her for the first time ever. And of course, you know, the chair of the board of trustees, Pete Delora was there as well as athletics director, Bob Beretta and President Dr. Linda Lemura, you and I got to talk right after, you know, you came mm -hmm. up to me and introduced me to Superman. So would love to uh, to know your initial thoughts on the move and just what it was like for you to experience that event on campus. Well, that day was actually a whirlwind for me. Um, I was at the College Swim Coaching Association uh, annual meetings down in Florida, and I uh, flew in, went right from the airport, right to the announcement ceremony. So I uh, had my bags still packed uh, as I got on campus, you know, pulled in at, I think, 1251, ran up, got to the uh, the ceremony right on time. Um, I've been around Lemoyne now, Dan, for 23, 24 years, first as a student athlete. And this whole Division One thing's always been, it's always been around. And it's neat to be a part of it, to to realize it, to kind of lead this program into the future. And uh, I can't be more excited or proud. You know, and and that's and that's the thing is, you know, when we were going through this process and, you know, I thank LeMoyne for letting me cover it so closely with, you know, a lot that we did an exclusive series with athletics director, Bob Beretta. I sat down with Dr. Linda Lemira, like a lot of this year has been spent with covering the student athletes and the coaches like yourself. And at the same time, covering what was going on here in the background, how did you kind of go through this process? Like you said, 23 years. So it's always been something that's been talked about, but going through this process within this past year, did you start to feel like this is different? This isn't just talking about it. I think it's going to happen. Like what were your thoughts through the past year? Well, I'm a planner. So um, we, uh, on the swimming and diving world, we we were operating under three calendars for 23, 24, Northeast 10, division one unknown with able to swim in conference finals or division one unknown, unable to swim in conference finals. So we, and dive. And so we've been kind of having a, a shadow calendar for the whole time. Um, and so When we thought about this, I mean, we had our season ending meetings, we were talking to our swimmers about, you know, hey, listen, this could happen. And this is where we think we could end up. And, and we made sure that to make sure that the message was, we are ready, you are ready. Because I think that whole shift to division one athletics, uh, as an athlete, when you're already part of an institution, that's not you get that little doubt in your mind. And we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that, listen, if this is, if this happens, we're going to be okay. You know, when we're talking to our recruits that we're bringing in for, well, I guess now our incoming freshman class, we wanted to recruit people who are going to be contributors who are going to be division two and division one. And so when we were to bring talking to those people, it was, Hey, listen, this could happen. So we kept setting the table over and over again. So it was certainly a surprise, but it wasn't really a surprise. We had been kind of talking about this and, and preparing ourselves so that we were ready to go if the decision was made. You know, and, and and how do you do that balance? I mean, when you are recruiting, are are you recruiting differently? I mean, have you always recruited division one caliber players that that you know could play at that level, but but were willing to go division two? Is was that has that always been the approach, or did you have to kind of say to yourself, okay, these are the people that I'm recruiting? but I need to maybe look in these other areas and look for different things. How did it affect recruiting? Did it affect recruiting? Our incoming class, when we were looking at them, analyzing their times, um, 
the beautiful part about swimming is that it's time, right? I know exactly how fast you go from point A to point B as long as there are certain conditions met. And so we knew the people that we're bringing in are going to be successful against our Division II Northeast 10 opponents. And now we know that they're going to be successful against our Division I Northeast Conference opponents. And so we were kind of playing a little bit of a tight wire act because, yes, we had to talk about what was. And now we have to talk about what is. But again, we were trying to always analyze, is this someone who's going to make a positive, a positive uh, improvement for us moving forward? And we think the people that were coming in are going to be doing that. You know, and, and for you, like you said, being a planner, having to set up three different schedules, any 10 schedule, schedule division one, where you can compete in the postseason schedule division one, where you couldn't, how do you balance all of that? And, and are you transparent with your student athletes? And do you say, Hey, for those of you that aren't finishing up your eligibility, here's the three things we could be dealing with. I mean, was there any talk about that during the season, after the season of I'm preparing you guys for three different roads, or is that something that you didn't address? Um, it, we didn't get too deep in the weeds with three different roads, but we did talk about two separate roads. You know, if this, then this, if that, then that. And, you know, the dates of our calendar moving forward are not necessarily changing. We know we're having a meet on this day. We just knew that it was either going to be a Northeast 10 opponent or we we're going to have a, a D1 opponent. And so for us, the calendar didn't change. It's just, you know, the person that we're swimming against that day. Um, and yeah, we were, we were honest with our, with our students moving with our student athletes. We said, listen, this is, this is, uh, if we stay here, this is good. It's going to look like, and you know, this is kind of our aspirational goal if it, if it switches. And so, uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're kind of where we want to be competitively speaking next year. Speaking here with Adam Zakowski, the Lemoyne Dolphins men's and women's swimming and diving head coach in this edition of the Dolphin Dive as we ID one. You personally spending over two decades at Lemoyne, student athlete, assistant coach, head coach, as of this past season. Now, as you interesting road for you, year two as a head coach, and you're going to be not in a different conference, you're going to be in a different division. So, yep. personally, for you, how have you gone from being a first time head coach to being a head coach that is now going into year two and embarking on something that's never happened for Lemoyne swimming and diving before. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, my time here at Lemoyne has been, uh, has been a, it's been fun. I, I've been, you know, I was a student here until 2004 um, and then was very, you know, engaged in our alumni uh, alumni group. And then uh, 2019, I got brought on, brought on staff. So I've been around for 20 years. I haven't been here for 20 years though. So that's all right. Um <laughs> It's funny, year one of, 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 of my head coaching has been the new guy after Coach Hanna left after yeah. 33 years. So we had a transition already from what was to what is, and now we're kind of doing it again. Um, and so I guess I've done it before. <laughs> uh, but what it also comes down to is, is I think, again, planning is key. If I If we can show people the map and say, listen, this is where we are. This is where we're going to go. It's not linear, but there are going to be some bumps along the way. Uh, as long as long as you can have that, you give that confidence to your athletes and say, we know what we're doing. I think it alleviates a lot of that stress. And so it was the same approach we took in, uh, you know, in May of 2022 is the same approach we're taking now in May of 2023. And we know where we're going and we're going to get everybody there in the end and work hard all the way through. And, you know, and, and, when you look at the conference of the Northeast Conference, you know, the NEC features familiar faces. You know, Stonehill and Merrimack used to be inside of the NE10. They reclassified from Division Two to Division One. Merrimack's going into year five. Stonehill's going into year two. So mm -hmm. what does that do for you going into a conference with institutions that have literally taken the road that LeMoyne is now taking? Uh, one of one of the coaches from one of those institutions reached out to me uh, last week and said, "You're going to be fine." They the <laughs> the conference does a great job of, of of helping reclassifying those teams, and I actually had a great uh, conversation uh, through email with Commissioner Morris of the uh, Northeast Conference, and then uh, Benjamin Shove, who is the swimming and diving 
uh, conference representative. And we spent we had a 45 minute conversation wide ranging about all of the things that are a little bit different with the Northeast Conference versus the Northeast 10 and brought me up to speed pretty quickly. Um, and so from you know getting that 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 email from a, a fellow reclassifier to to getting that the time with the conference, um, it really kind of makes you feel like you know we're we're in the right spot. We're in a place that wants us to get better because as we get better, they get better and we all get better. And so that that's a that's been a really great uh, great experience over the last now twelve days. And you know, when when they you know when you got that call and you got that you're going to be all right. What what was their kind of maybe deeper reasoning for that or what they told you to maybe calm your nerves a little bit? I, it wasn't what they said. It was kind of the manner in which they said. It was, listen, it, it was that calming voice of it's going to be okay. We've done it before. We're here to help you. I got I got everyone's cell phone number. I've been in contact with oh, about two thirds of the of the conference already um the head coaches and so it's been a, it's been really welcoming uh in the nec is is unique from a swimming and diving perspective um there are nine women's teams and there are now four men's teams um and so we have to we have to make sure that we have our our our, our men's competitive calendar set also with a number of meets and our women so there'll be certainly some opponents that we do swim against uh, in, in the NEC, but some of them with uh, a women's only team makes scheduling a little bit difficult there, but it, it kind of comes with the territory in swimming, especially collegiate swimming. So we, we know how to work our, around that. As you talked about nine members inside of the NEC for women's swimming and diving, only four for the men's side of things. How, how do you go about that? And, and what were your student athletes thoughts about having such a discrepancy between the two of them where the women inside of the NEC have all of this, you know, they, they have, you know, twice as many opponents to go up against than the men do in conference. So what was that conversation like with the student athletes and, and how did they respond to something like that with women swimming and diving, having so much more membership? Well, uh, in, in our, in our former conference at Northeast 10, uh, there was, there was an imbalance also, there was more women's teams and men's teams right? Um, or, there were more women historically more women competitors than men competitors so uh, it's a little bit of a different rapper kind of like what we've been talking about it, it is what it is um we will go and we'll do what we have to do we and i dan you and i've spoken about this before there's no defense in swimming yeah. so we can't stop what they do we can't <laughs> we can't get in their way they put their people up. We put our people up and, you know, whoever touches the wall first is the winner. And then that's, that's how it's going to go. It doesn't matter how many teams are there. We're still going to try to be the best that we can be no matter who we swim against. Um, but, you know, the, the conference is, 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 is interesting just because of the, of the, of the imbalance on the teams, but you know, what does it mean when we're looking at out, out of conference teams, we have to find, find teams that have both men's and women's programs and, and we've been able to do that, and, and we're we're excited about our our upcoming calendar. And for you, when you look at scheduling, I was speaking with the athletic director Bob Beretta, and he said there's still an opportunity uh, for sports to schedule some Division Two and transition and whatnot. Do you look at keeping anything in Division Two in your schedule on there as far as meets go? what's what's kind of your thought on division two opponents and then as a second part to the question what what type of opponents are you looking for are you looking to start building some division one new york rivalries and, and trying to reach out to schools within the state how are you kind of looking at the schedule especially for the men's side where you have to make up for some openings um well we actually have our schedule set believe it or not um we did some work surprised. ahead of time what's I'm not, that i'm not surprised when it comes to you that that schedule's done <laughs> yeah schedule's done um but you know we have we did maintain some of our division two northeast 10 opponents um some of them you know w w within the northeast 10 it was kind of home and home agreements one year you would go there one year they would come here and so um a couple of those folks that are supposed that were scheduled to come to syracuse we we, we made sure we kept them on our, our schedule here um, but, you know, we were able to identify schools, um, within, 
non-conference rides within two, two and a half hours that were, were uh, agreeable to, to swimming against us. And so we're going to have the ability to swim against bon St. Bonaventure and Niagara University, the MAC champion, and uh, Colgate, UMass. So we have a lot of out-of-conference um, opponents already set up. Um, we're excited to go go visit Long Island University um, in conference. So, so we definitely uh, are excited to get the ball rolling. And coming from Adam Zakowski here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Lemoyne, Dolphins, men's and women's swimming and diving head coach in the move to Division One from the NE10 to the NEC. For you in your career, and as a father and a husband, what has this move been like? And inside of the Zakowski household, how did the family kind of get around it? Because whenever I talk about your family, I picture the boys sitting there with the laptop, like on top of the table, watching watching yeah. meet. So what was it like to to come home and say, hey, guess what? You know, dad's a D1 coach now, and, and this is what we're doing. Uh I think the 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 general consensus was so you're still gonna be a swim coach, right? And they go, <laughs> yeah. And they go, all right, whatever. <laughs> that so there you go. Uh <laughs> nice. <laughs> not to not to minimize anything, but when you're six and three, that's that's kind of the way they look at the world, you know, kind of you know, but um you know, from a family perspective, uh my mom and dad were we're super excited. My my uh, in laws were excited. Aaron, my wife, she was again. Oh, you're still a swim coach, um, <laughs> but uh, it makes you think about things. It makes you not that not that being a Division two coach doesn't, but you you realize that you're now a part of this coaching class of, of folks and and I think that there are unwritten expectations now and there are things that that are are you know that, that you have to live up to and and, and we're going to do it we're going to do it and professionally I'm going to do it we're going to do it personally we're going to make sure we have that balance of home and and, and and at the pool and and we set our schedules up to make sure that we're there for homework and bedtime and dinners yeah. but um you know we're we're taking it real seriously and uh you know, all kidding aside, we want to make sure that we we prepare our student athletes for what we think is going to be dynamic competition that we we think is going to you know put test them at to the, their highest of their limits, and we're going to be there every step of the way with them. What are some of those expectations, the unspoken ones that you just mentioned? Somebody looked at my shirt the other day and go are you the coach there? And I've worn the shirt before. And now all of a sudden it's like, not that you're recognized around town, but I, I think that you have to handle yourself in, in understanding that you perhaps are going to be more in the public eye and your, you know, your social media posts are going to be more uh, looked at and, and, and tone and the way that you carry yourself. Not that we do anything questionable, but I think that there's a little bit more of a spotlight um, and that national media, you know, is going to always try to find a way to, to, to uncover some of those uh, you know, problems. We don't have those, but the fact is, is that we just have to recognize that the spotlight's a little bit brighter and that we just have to handle our, handle our business in an appropriate way. You know, and, and I can appreciate, you know, the work that you've done and how you've gone about it, uh, meeting you, there, you know, outside of, of the swimming and diving team, you know, when you were there in Bob's office and, and helping Bob and, and looking at all those elements of it. I mean, you have seen different parts of Lemoyne. Why do you think Lemoyne is prepared for this? Why do you think it's the right move? Why are you positively moving forward in belief the Dolphins can do it? Because everybody's got an opinion from the outside looking in. I consider myself a part of this Finn family being the exclusive partner because I've spent so much time. I would like to think that coaches and student athletes don't see me the same or treat me the same as the media, because I'm always coming in to tell the real story, not the fabricated or the mutilated story that someone's looking at an angle for. 
So I've gotten to get in the inside of Lemoyne and really get to learn Lemoyne. You've spent so much time there in so many different ways, doing so many different things. Why is Lemoyne prepared and, and how do you envision this move? I think we're prepared because the leadership on the top has been there. Um, I think uh, our athletic director, Bob Beretta, has has been to the mountaintop in, 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 in the highest level. I mean, running the Army Navy game when you have President of the United States there yeah. gives you a level of sophistication organization that that a move like this requires. So I think it starts with the top and happy it's him, not me some days. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that that vision, plus the fact, if, if you look at our, our sports programs, um, you know, we, we've played division one opponents before, um, you know, our, our softball coach has been a division one coach before Tracy's been there before, um, our men's or excuse, pardon me, our women's soccer coach has been there before. So from an institutional knowledge, we have experts that we can be here. Um, we were hosting uh, a prospective student athlete who was transferring from a different division one um, or considering division uh, transferring from a different division one program. And he walked in here and he said, you know, your facilities here are better than what I'm coming from. Yeah. And so when you hear things like that and you know that there's the vision and the, and the strategic plan, you know, we're ready. You know, I think there's obviously going to be some, again, bumps and bruises along the way and some learning curves. And I think that's what the four-year transition process does. But I think that we are in a position to be successful. You know, after watching Stonehill do it and speaking to the former coach at Stonehill, we're, we're ready. They, they, they thought they were ready or they, maybe they didn't, I don't know. But we think we're ready. We've been preparing for it and we're going to be okay. Yeah, you know, and when you see, like you talk about, we've discussed, you know, the postseason and different things that are going to be happening. One of the things that's going to happen is a unique situation where as of July 1st, 2023, you're an NEC team, you're a Division One institution, swimming and diving is right there inside of Division One NEC. But you cannot compete in the NEC postseason for two years, can't compete in the NCAAs for four years. How do you sell that to recruits and current student athletes? And what are your thoughts on that? Because there is the notion, and Bob said to me on our last AD and DT, that they've asked the NEC to do away with the two years completely and have no hiatus in the conference, and that the NCAA was supposed to be looking at at least matching a conference, and instead of making it two and four, that it would just be two for both, two for the NCAA, two for the conference that you're in if you reclassify. So how do you view this? How do you see it? How do you sell it if it stays the way that it is? Well, swimming and diving and our friends in uh, cross country and track and field actually are outside of that two-year provision. So we are able to swim at the NEC championship meet starting in February 2024. Uh, remember I told you we had three different calendars? Yeah. Yes. Well, we had a plan if we couldn't swim in that one. So we're, we don't worry about that one anymore, but we, yeah. we had a plan. So, uh, you know, luckily we are in a unique situation where we are, have been welcomed by the NEC. And I, I think it has to do with, with automatic qualification to NCAA as opposed to a, a, in, in, in our, an our uh, sport time. So I believe we still are not available to swim at the NCAAs if, if we were to have a, an athlete or a relay make an A or B cut or a diver make zone cuts. Yeah. Um, but there is some, there is a national invitational tournament for swimming, you know, and so there is a pathway for us to have, you know, a longer postseason if we're able to qualify for that. So how do we talk about it? Well, we, we've talked about the fact that, you know, we either had NEC championships or we had an ECAC championship at the end of February. So we knew we had a, a, a home for a championship meet and we always knew about the, the, the national invitational meet. So we have pathways moving forward. Um, I know that I have spoken with coach Wheeler of our wheelers about him, him and, and his, and his, you know, uh, getting his track athletes to, um, to NEC. So, so we've been, you know, blessed in that, but you know, it, it, it's sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And, 
you know, I, I don't want to get too deep into the fray of whether it's fair or not. I know that uh, Bob talked about the fact that, you know, going in, we kind of knew what the deal was. And so um, while it's unfortunate and I hope that, you know, some type of legislation can be made, um, I, I think that we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. We'll come out the end. We'll come out on the right end of this as we move forward. Well, yeah, you know, a small price to pay for for the dividends in the long run. And I don't know how you feel about this, but I know, you know, as you've talked about before, having an analytical mind and then getting to see different parts of athletics beyond being a head coach. I know watching this realignment reclassification, I put up a map last year and I, I mapped out the conferences. I mapped out who was making sense, who wasn't making sense, why some things, you know, could make sense, why, why the pack in the Mountain West should bond together to save, you know, college football and different things going on on the West Coast. So I, I, I've i put out a whole plan in place and put the map up there. I'm a believer that he who hesitates is lost. So in the world we live in today, from the research that I've done, and I'm sure there's people out there far smarter than me, what I've done and what I've looked at is that if you can go to Division One and you have the ability to do it, you do it. You do it on your plan, on your time, on, on, on your merits, on what you can bring to the table and on your decision instead of the decision being made for you. I spoke with the chair of the board, Pete DeLora, and he spoke to me about it. He said, 15 years ago, I thought we missed the boat. And the MAC didn't want us in 2007. So here we are today, and we have the opportunity to make this decision. We have the opportunity to go forward. As, as an institution, we were prepared. The strategic plan was put in place. The outside person to come in and check and look at Lemoyne in all different shapes and sizes and ways was done. I was with Bob before that started, when it was going on, after it ended. So Lemoyne had made it clear, and Bob had made it clear to me, we're going to be ready whether or not we go, instead of having somebody call us and say, yeah, give us four months to get our paperwork together. And when I spoke with Noreen Morris, the commissioner of the NEC, NEC, she was moved. She said everything was thorough. Everything was done. She was moved by the fact that every single thing that they needed was there. There was nothing that LeMoyne hadn't done. They turned over all their stones. They were prepared for it. So when you look upon this moment, how do you feel about realignment reclassification? Because my viewpoint, and you could disagree and or agree and, and have the conversation about it. I feel like if you can, you do, because 10 years or less from now, I think there might be somewhat of a cemetery. And I didn't want Lemoyne to be a part of that. Bob was uh, gracious enough to to include me and and another coach in some of the strategic plans that while well, we were formulating our strategic plan, and he kind of talked to the group about how you really read one of these things, and he said, you know, listen, the whole plan, the thing here is they're they're a little bit ambiguous because you as a as a division chair or a head coach have to read this plan and then implement it yourself. And so what does that mean? It means that when we read the strategic plan, the new strategic plan, how are we going to make the swim team get to the same levels as the strategic plan that he, that he, uh, that that group outlined. And so we've taken those steps. And I think that that's just a small microcosm of what we've done throughout the, the entire department. Um, you know, we've, You know, uh, one of the things when I first started working here with Bob was he wanted to do these visitors guides. So you you send these guides out to the other other colleges uh, who are coming in, and it kind of gives them the lay of the land. And it was some of the things that you know he showed me what they had done at West Point or Army West Point, and kind of what the other schools did. And again, there's a lot of logistics that go in with especially football with you know 30, 40 buses. But the point was is that we had taken those steps all the way back in the summer of 2021 of starting this kind of these little projects along the way to get us ready to to make that leap. And so you know, I, I think that we, I think it's true. We laid the stones, you know, now again, out, hindsight 2020 kind of seeing where we've ended up. I, I see what the process was. You know, I, I was in business for a long time 
and uh, and it was one of those things in businesses either you're growing or you're dying right you have to continue to grow and i think that this is the next logical step or this is the step that makes sense through the board of trustees of how lemoyne continues to grow and becomes a a a, a name brand a national brand and i think that that was that that was the decision that they made um I don't know how often these 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 reclassification letters come if they do. I don't know how often you get a phone call saying, hey, come join a different content, conference. And so I, I don't know. It seems to me that we had taken the steps. We had identified, someone identified us as, you know, asked us to prom because it's prom season right now for all my, <laughs> my GSAs. And so, you know, we took, we took those steps. Um, and I think that it, it's the next step forward, and, you know, and we're going to be fine. And I, I, I think that it, there's a whole broader, you know, conference realignment stuff that you're talking about. And I'm sure you saw the the notes from the ACC conference meetings last week. And so, you know, you, you know, that constant change is always in, in the mix. And I think what we've done is we've made our decision. We've, we've planted our flag and now we're, we're ready to take the next step. Yeah. You know, and, and this is the first time Adam that, you or I can say that there is now two division one schools in Syracuse, New York. What does that do for this community? And how do you feel about the fact that Syracuse, we hear things like New York's college team and this, that, whatever, but Syracuse, New York, within five minutes of each other, we now have two, Division one schools as of July 1st thoughts. I think that Lemoyne and Syracuse have always been close partners from an academic standpoint, especially with uh, the way that we work together with their engineering, um, their engineering department. So I think that we've, we've worked, you know, lockstep with them on, on some academic stuff, but from an athletic standpoint, well, you know, People have said, how, how are you going to recruit against them? And my content, my comment has always been, well, if someone's here in Syracuse looking at good old Syracuse, well, they're going to also take a ride across town now because you know what? There is an alternative option. Yeah. Um, and and for that, I, I think that there there is a competitive space. I think when you drive around town, you do see people with their Lemoyne stickers and their Lemoyne shirts. And I do think that there's an embedded following. And I think that a lot of the, Lemoyne alumni in the area are, 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 you know, civic leaders. And I think that, that I, that there is certainly a place for it. Um, hey, there's only one division one swim team in Syracuse now, so I can, we'll take the win on that one. Right. <laughs> uh, yes. You know, I, I remember when Syracuse university um, cut its men's and women's swimming team. Uh, Lou Walker was the coach at the time. And I remember that, that certainly left a void um, in the swimming community here, and and you know we're more than happy to kind of fill that back in, and and lead the swimming community here in Central New York and the diving community. And you know, there, listen, there's two baseball there's two baseball teams in New York City. There's two football teams in New York City. There's what three different hockey teams if you want to consider the Devils, Islanders, and Rangers. Right? The cities do this multiple teams in one area. And so I think that there's the space here for, for us to be successful here in Syracuse. And you may mention a baseball. There's going to be one division, one baseball team in Syracuse now yeah. with Lemoyne. So probably the most important question to me, getting to know you being on campus, being around the Finn family, feeling part of the Finn family. And remember, I mean, president Dr. Linda Lemura, she texted me and said, you are a dolphin. You know, you are part of this family. These last couple of years, as we step into year three of this partnership, I've learned a lot. And there's a lot of good people on campus. And there's a lot of people that that care and appreciate and believe in honest relationships, face-to-face, -face, talking, uh, open open pathways, building bridges. You're one of them for me. And I appreciate that. How does Lemoyne stay Lemoyne going to Division One? How does this college that I have grown to love in such a very personal way, how does Lemoyne keep its identity? How how do I walk up and down these halls 
and it doesn't get aloof and it doesn't get distant and the doors don't close and coaches don't become too busy. How, how do we keep LeMoyne LeMoyne? I think we go back to our shared vision of, of the LeMoyne way. I mean, from the athletic department standpoint, it's culture, right? Our culture has to do with the five touchstones that we talk about, magis, career personalis, social justice, men and women for others, going to miss the fifth one. I knew it, but that's okay. Um, I think it's culture. It's a culture here. Um, and I, like I told you earlier in this, I was at that coaching conference and the keynote speaker talked about culture and how do you build culture within your program? It, you know, and then a week before that, I we were talking about strategic plan and culture. And I think that there is a culture here at Lemoyne that we need to that I hope we hold on to. And I think that that culture is what keeps LeMoyne, LeMoyne. Um, doesn't matter when you graduated from LeMoyne, you go and find an alum and you can strike up a conversation and it's like you've been pals and buddies for a hundred years. And I think that, you know, again, obviously things are going to change. Things always change, right? But I think it's the culture that we have here in that notion of, of, our integrity and striving for excellence and being the change. I think that that those core values we have are what keeps us dolphins, no matter where we are. And coming from Adam Zakowski here on wake up call with Dan Tortora in this edition of the dolphin dive and our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership on wake up call with Dan Tortora with Lemoyne dolphins, men's and women's head coach for swimming and diving. Adam, as always, I appreciate your time, appreciate your candidness and your care and your love for the community and for Lemoyne College and for your student athletes. You definitely have a, a very uniquely exciting group of student athletes. I've gotten to meet some of them and talk with them, and they uh, they make you feel welcome in the first conversation. So uh, maybe you're spoiled a little bit in a good way. I do have to ask you this, though. Back. Does pra Does practice stay? Early in the morning? You know it, Dan. Of course. <laughs> yes. Again, Fair through enough. my extensive research, the only time in the day when there are no classes between 6 and 8 a.m. There you go. So <laughs> we're going to keep keep those mornings going. There you go, student athletes. Early in the morning. So we'll see you there. As always, Adam, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Have a wonderful day.